I'm Rain from Rick and Wayne's Blue. Wicked Wayne. Doing great. Already doing great. Hi, I'm Rain from Wicked Rain Studio. And today I'm going to do a video about my Halloween costume. So there's a lot of people on YouTube that are all joining together and doing a historic Halloween inspired costume challenge. And so I found the look that I want to do from the Weldon's Fancy Dress Book. It's actually a look designed for children, so I'm going to make it my size. But it is so fun that I'm going to be a thimble and a measuring tape for Halloween this year. Today is the Sunday before Halloween, so I have about four days to make this costume and get this video up in time. So fingers crossed I make it happen. Uh, the first thing I have to do is drape the bodice. And so I'm going to drape it on my form, which is roughly my size and drape it in muslin first and then I'll make a pattern. So let's get started. I want to make sure that my fabric is just enough. And so I drape with the whole piece and then I cut off what I don't need as I go. So starting so that my front lies perfectly straight, making sure I have enough fabric to go over the shoulder. I want to get the shoulder nice and smooth. I'm going to cut away the fabric up here. The dart is going to be about here so that my fabric hangs straight down and doesn't skew forward. Now that I have that roughly thrown in, I can cut some of my fabric away. At this point, what I'm doing is cleaning up the dart. Now I have to decide how low I want this to be. If this is where my natural waist is and I want it to be dropped, I'm gonna do a few inches below the natural waist. Grab my ruler and start to draw. I've decided to drop it about four inches below the waist. Now I can draw in my side seam, draw in my dart, my neckline, I'm gonna go a little low so that it's not all the way up against my neck and my arm side. Looking at it, I'm not really loving the neckline so I'm gonna make an adjustment. Now I have the front patterned. So I'm gonna cut my fabric away and do the back. Okay, now the back. Like on the front, I first lined up the selvage of my fabric so it was going straight down the center back so it's nice and square. And now I'm working across the shoulder to make sure it's smooth across here. And now I can start to trim away. This is the part where making it so you can see it and I can see it is a bit tricky. I don't want it to flare out too much. So just making sure I'm not pulling it too tightly. This is a really quick, simple shape, which is uh, one of the other reasons why I picked it for this Halloween challenge give myself time. Now I'm going to trace my other lines to match up my shoulder seam and my side seam. Just like that. So now I'm going to take it off the form, um, but that's all it takes to drape it pretty fast. Oh, where did I put that wheel? Helps if you have all your tools before you start filming. Now I've taken the muslin that I draped on the form off and I'm lying it flat on my paper. And what I'm going to use is this pounce wheel. It's also called a needle point tracing wheel. Now that everything is traced out, I can take my muslin drape and get rid of it. And I trace all my lines in pencil. At this point, I do things like making sure my bottom is square, all of the lines that should be straight, I straighten out, and most of these lines should be straight. I use a French curve to get my curvy lines pretty. Now, 
I need to cut it out and make sure the parts line up. Okay, now I'm gonna true it up. When truing a pattern, you do things like make sure the front and back side seam are the same. Make sure the bottom is a nice clean line as it goes all the way across. Mark notches. Then I'm gonna cut out my dart. This pattern is done. Now, I need to do some circle skirt math. Math time. This is probably really awkward, but I don't have Katie to tell me to stop. So I need the measurement of where this top of my skirt is going to be. So I'm gonna measure the hip line. So, time to return to geometry. The circumference of a circle is equal to pi times twice the radius. Stay with me here. I know that the circumference of my waist seam needs to be 41 inches. And I need to find the radius so that I can do a circle to create my pattern. 41 divided by pi, 3.14, is 13 inches. Divide that by two and I get 7.5. I know that the radius I need to get my waist is 7.5. The length I need for the whole skirt, I want to be 18 inches. This way, I'll end up with three rows that are each six inches tall. 18 plus 7.5 is 25.5. That's where my first line needs to be, at 25.5. This line that I just drew is the center of all of my circles. Now, 7.5 inches down. This is my radius for my waist circle. I'm also going to draw a line at six inches down from that and 12 inches down from that. To get my circle looking beautiful, I will put my pencil at this point and push pin at my center point. There! That looks like a waist. Okay, now I'm going to do that for each of my lines, for each of my stripes in my circle. So now what I need to do is I need to lay out my dashes for my skirt. My plan is to actually silk paint all of the numbers and lines onto my fabric. And so I'm gonna draw them out here so that I can then trace that design onto the fabric itself. I'm gonna make a dash every inch. Each of these inches represents an eighth of an inch in my measuring tape scale. So, what I'm gonna do is make every eighth line go all the way down to the bottom. Now I've laid out my inches on my measuring tape is I need to go through and do all of the, over all of these lines with a sharpie. I want each of my lines to be a quarter inch thick and I also want all of my little notches to be an inch and a half long so I'm actually going to mark the sharpie on both sides of my eighth and inch on each side of my line and lengthen these notches so that I actually get the edge that I'm going to trace with my resist when it's time for me to silk paint. This part's gonna look so much faster in the video because it's gonna be sped up and it's gonna look like I'm so good at this. Instead of drawing out each number, I went ahead and found a font that I like and now I'm just gonna tape the number onto the paper. This way I can use the same pattern for the front and back and when I'm ready to do the back, I just switch the numbers to the numbers to continue it going across the back. Now I have my fabric.
fabric stretched over a silk frame. This frame is just some uh, one by three wood made into a box. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the fabric is stretched and pinned on. Uh, I have something underneath lifting the pattern up so I can see it through my fabric. Now what I need to do is paint on this uh, removable water-based resist. What this will do is create a line that the dye won't spread through. So I have to go and basically trace the outside of all of my lines with the resist and then later I can go in and paint the dye and it'll stay within my lines. You have to make sure there's no gaps or else the dye will spread past it and ruin these really clean lines that I want. We don't need to film me doing this for the two hours it's probably gonna take. Now I can actually begin silk painting. Normally when I silk paint, I wet the whole fabric first, and then I can use the silk paint like watercolor to get very cool blending techniques and ombres. However, for this project, I don't actually want those ombres. I want the dye to be very strong and harsh, and I don't want to water it down. So I'm not putting any water on the fabric first at all. I'm just painting the dye straight onto it. Now I'm going to set my dye. The best way to get your dye set with brightest colors is to actually carefully wrap it in muslin and then steam it in a soup vat. But I don't have one of those, and so I'm using a chemical set instead. It just means that my black isn't going to be quite as dark as it could be. Since the fabric is so sheer, I've decided to do a second layer underneath with the yellow. I'm using the pearl edge setting on my serger to hem the skirt. Here I'm just quickly serging together the side seams of my outer skirt. Now I'm serging the lining and the outer skirt together at the top. This will make it easy for me to attach the entire skirt to the bodice. I've got the pattern for my bodice here, and I want to have all those little dimples that are in a thimble. So what I'm gonna do now is create a dot on my pattern where I want those dimples to be. I'm ready to cut out my bodice now. For my fabric, I'm just using a gray tablecloth to get that silver gray look for a thimble. I'm gonna push pin my pattern to my fabric. I'm gonna mark out my seam allowances. Half inch everywhere except the center back where I'm using a full inch. I got this when I went to Japan last year. It's double sided tracing paper. So I can tuck it in to my folded fabric and when I use my tracing wheel to mark all of my dots that I've made, it marks on both sides of the fabric. This 
This bodice is going to be self-lined, and so I'm going to cut a second set to be the lining. In order to get my bodice to look like it has those divots like a thimble, I'm actually going to do my lining fabric, my outside fabric, and then this quilting batting in between to create puffiness. And that I don't want in my seam allowance because I don't want it to get bulky there. So I'm going to cut this out with no seam allowance and I'm also going to cut the dart out. I'm doing the shoulder seams of the lining and the outside. I'm going to sew all the way around the neckline and the arm size before I then turn it inside out, tuck in the batting and quilt it. It's padded, and I'm gonna go through and stitch on every dot. This is my straight stitch auto cut juki machine, and what it'll do is it'll automatically back stitch and cut my thread for me. Now repeat 156 times. After I get all my dimples quilted, I can sew my side seams and attach the zipper in the back. Now I can sew the skirt to the bodice. The skirt is a little bigger in the waist than the bodice, and so I'm gathering it down. And I'm using a straight pin to help make sure my gathers are even across the whole thing. At this point here, you can see how the quilting effect happened. I've also already put in my zipper. The last thing I have to do is hand sew on my belt and the dress is done. I finished the whole thing and then I realized that I wanted the thimble bodice to be more silver, less gray. And so I'm going to spray it with Design Master Metallic Silver. Uh, it's just a fabric spray paint. Uh, the skirt is actually underneath, folded up, tucked in, and then I have taped it off where it sticks out the bottom so that I don't ruin my skirt by spraying it silver. Ooh. Design Master is really thin, so you can do multiple thin coats really nicely. All finished! Thanks for watching! Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the other historical Halloween videos that the other costumers have made! <laughs>